So what is this FedRAMP? This is actually a term that even a lot of folks in the federal government still don't totally understand. And there's a lot of confusion around it for good reason. And here's why. The government has a tendency to use a lot of jargon. And basically, when it comes to jargon, it gets all jumbled up, right? We forget what this acronym means and uh, what that acronym means and how they come together. So FedRAMP uh, is, oops, uh, FedRAMP is basically called the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. This is a government-wide program. So government-wide means it could be military, civilian sector as well can participate in, a, in this program where there's a standardized approach to security assessments, authorization, and continuous monitoring of cloud products, of cloud products that is. <clears throat> now, why is this important? Because before FedRAMP, we generally had every agency, whether they were in the DOD or not, doing their own little thing. Some organizations knew how to manage security. Some organizations really didn't manage security. So that brought up the challenge of having some kind of standardization in the government so that when it came to managing risk, and FedRAMP really is more of a risk management program for the cloud than anything else. Even though it has a lot of good structure to it, and I'll walk you through some of the templates and give you an idea of how it works. But basically, again, that's what it's sort of all about is it's managing risks. So how do we deploy cloud services in the federal government so that we are not compromised by someone on the outside, right? And there's no question that demand for cloud professionals with experience has never been higher. Uh, if you go to LinkedIn, you'll see literally 2,000 jobs with FedRAMP as a nice to have as a requirement, for example. So <clears throat> how is this, this FedRAMP program really managed? Well, there's going to be governing bodies that participate. Now, not every agency is a governing body, but typically the larger ones. And the governing bodies, of course, perform different tasks. They provide oversight. They go through the authorization and certification process, making sure that, for example, if a cloud provider like AWS, when they get a new service online, that it meets the requirements of FedRAMP. In other words, it meets the risk requirements. So that is a really big deal. Um, question. Uh, yes, yes, we will. Uh, I'll have the moderator provide some insight into that before we close. But yes, I don't think it'll be a problem to get a copy of the webinar and slide deck. Yes, good question. Thank you. So basically, again, uh, FedRAMP uh, is important for many different reasons. Now, in reality, to talk about FedRAMP is about an eight hour class. And actually, some companies have a two day class. Uh, but I'm going to just cover the main points and make sure that uh, that we uh, we have an idea. And then what I'd like to do is compare it to FISMA because there's another acronym that's commonly used called FISMA, and that is legislation. So basically, um, again, we want to know the difference. But basically, let's let's talk about FedRAMP briefly, and then get into some comparisons. And then we'll proceed on and talk about opportunities, how you become uh, basically FedRAMP enabled and, and all that. So FedRAMP is really important for any government contractor or any government employee to really understand. Also, it's really important for anyone trying to sell cloud services or integrate cloud services for the federal government. So let me give you some examples. If you're Microsoft and you want the government customers to use Azure, well, you need to have the compliance requirements sort of ready to go. You need to be authorized to have government customers on your cloud service. If you're Salesforce, if you're Palo Alto, IBM, so on and so on, AWS, right? 
all of these integrators, all of these uh, cloud providers need to have people as well enabled in FedRAMP. And I'll give you some examples here uh, when we get to that point in the uh, slide deck. But a lot of people just don't realize the knowledge that, uh, that goes into FedRAMP, but also the demand for folks that even have a clue about it. All right, so this is going to provide basically increased consistency around solutions for cloud. They're going to also meet requirements around FISMA, and I'll talk about what that is here shortly, and transparency between the government and the provider automation around monitoring and also assessments around secure cloud solutions. Now, when, let me get my pen here. Now, one of the things to be aware of is that FedRAMP uh, is a result of basically the cloud first policy. And this came out through the Office of Management and Budget, and they realized we had to solve a problem. We didn't want the IRS, and we didn't want DHS and the Secret Service, and you know the intelligence agencies or DOD to all be like having redundant duties and tasks to manage cloud. So the best way to address it was through what's called the Cloud First Policy. Now, this is a result of the Office of Management Budget um, basically saying, you know what, we need to mandate security requirements. We want to reduce this overlapping spending and fragmentation. So that's what FedRAMP is. Now, also there is FISMA that came out, and this is a federal law that defined that government agencies needed to manage security. And that was the basis for FedRAMP. Now, NIST, uh, again, I didn't talk about NIST too much, but the National uh, Institute of Science and Technology out of Garrett Gaithersburg, Maryland, their Department of Commerce, basically, <clears throat> they manage all the best practices. They put together the templates, basically, around this. So these templates basically go through what we have to do to be compliant and how to assess it. So if you're a cloud provider, whether you're a SaaS or infrastructure as a service, and you want to sell to the government, you need to go through getting authorization to do that. So if you have a cloud service, again, we need to do what? We have to go and actually um, go through the authorization process. And I'll talk briefly about that. So basically, again, there's an authorization board you have to go through. You have a, an authorization, basically, authority you have to go through called an ATO. Uh, basically, it's an approval process is, is really what it is. Now, there's controls as part of this. Now, for example, if you go and you look at NIST 800.5.3, this is basically what's defining most of the controls in uh, FedRAMP. Now, it creates basically what's a baseline. So a baseline is what? A starting point that we need to use to make sure that we have set ACLs properly, that we have gone out and used the principal least privilege, that we have gone out and secured ports that aren't open. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of stuff. So to get ready for this, we have to, if we're a service provider, an integrator, we have to pay basically a third party to come in and go through basically these checklists to do an assessment. 